So here's what I wanted to do. I am flicking a bug off my canvas. Here's what we're gonna do. I've got a canvas that I'm, <laughs> it's a painting that I have to get done uh, in the next three weeks because I have a show coming up. So this is gonna have to, this is gonna have to launch. So what I'm gonna do is use a piece that I'm actually gonna start right here. I just have it sketched out and I'm gonna start in with the background and I'm gonna, we're gonna work with colors. So if you've got kind of a base set of colors, <clears throat> that's great. And I'm gonna start to build in. And then what we're gonna show is kind of some depth, how to work that a little bit in our painting. Um, so my goal is to get this section in here really rocking. I'm not gonna worry about the rock structure in front or Wiley and his tunnel painting or even the detour sign right now. So um, when I'm getting into painting, so what a couple of things I wanted to address with oil painting and really I do the same kind of thing for acrylics for the most part um, and for watercolor is I work back to front. Okay, so I'm starting on the background I'm working out there because I might notice that on my on where my piece is. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see the marks where the rock structure is. Flicked another bug off my canvas. Um, I, you know, maybe I'm painting over that a little bit and that's okay because when I, I'm gonna paint back to front. So every layer is gonna come forward. So that's what's kind of important about this. Um, meaning the very back back layer for me is the sky and I'm gonna start to work my clouds in. So, working back to front. The other thing is brush type. So uh, here is my, here are my oil paint brushes, right? So I've got a whole mess load of these things. I've got a wide brush. Now this is something I'm gonna use if I've got a large background area or even a large foreground area to cover. So like my giant Mandalorian piece up there, I'll actually start oil painting. I'm gonna start painting that soon. Not today, but um, I'll use this when I need to cover wide areas, right? And then I'll get into like a fan brush if I'm working, you know, like some foliage, like brush uh, bushes and stuff like that, um, or even just kind of gentle clouds, you know, you can do with this kind of thing. The the longer I have on my bristles, right, the, the softer my strokes are going to be. The shorter my bristles, the harder the strokes. Now, Sometimes if we're doing kind of like a, yes, if we're doing like a dry brush technique where I'm not wetting the paint down anymore with a linseed oil or something like that, I might use a shorter brush, especially if I've painted already. Like, so take Mando, for instance, if I've painted that and I'm done, like I've let it dry, I might come over and then use a little bit of a stiffer brush. Uh, yes, there you go. Use, that's what I used on that. That's all acrylic just to get my background done and that's it. So that way I know what my shapes are. Er, here, I'll move this out of the way for a second. So on Mando, for instance, on his helmet, I know what all my shadows are and um, I'll start to paint in with that when I get into my oils. All right, back to this. So Jay, Jay had a question. Um, yes. I have acrylics and tempera, which would be better? I would use acrylics and not tempera. And then you're, make sure you've got like a, cup of water or something by you because you're going to wet your paints down. Uh, you want to keep it as kind of wet as you can so that you can at least manipulate it um, a little bit more. So I know I think Daryl's going to cover acrylics too. He'll what he's going to do will be more applicable to that, but you can use acrylics for today. We're going to go over some similar techniques. So I've got a whole bunch of different brush widths, tips, flat brushes for certain services. I've got like super detailed brushes. So that little guy right there on just, you know, a few hairs, that's what I'm doing for detail wise. Um, my palette, I use the crap out of my palettes, right? So I'll paint six or seven or eight paintings using the same palette. Right now I've painted two paintings with this one. This will be the third. Um, when it gets into oil paints, for what you're doing right now, whatever works, you know, um, that you have is fine. I like to use, um, I like Blix line, I like Grumbacher, all that kind of stuff. And then I always keep, so like, Jay, you're gonna keep a cup of water so that you can like um, clean out your brush and then actually use that too to um, kind of soften up, keep your paints wet. I have just a cup, it's got turpentine in it. It's odorless turpentine because the odor stuff, like which I don't even think they make too much really anymore is 
it'll get, it gives me a headache. So this stuff does not, and it looks, it looks like this. So it's terpenoid. It's an odorless turpentine substitute works great cleans out my brushes and you can actually use this like you would uh, linseed oil, which I also have. Now, I don't use that a lot because this is more of like to linseed oils to keep my oil paints a little wetter. The turpentine is to kind of clean brushes out, but I'll still use that a little bit if I want to make it uh, my paint a little wet. Where did my linseed oil go? Here it is. And then there's this. So this is linseed oil, right? I'll put this down um, on a, a, like in a cup or something, and I'll use that to keep my paints very loose. Now that also means that my dry time for my oils is a lot longer. So typically on something like this, like I've got a painting that I finished. Um, let me go grab that real quick. I've got a painting that I finished in oils and it took four days to dry. All right, so, and I have to be careful with this one because it's sold already. So um, just to give you an idea here, actually, um, Scott, let's go overhead. So to give you an idea on oils, right, um, this took about four days to dry completely. And then same thing where I worked back to front. So I started with sky, I worked in my clouds, and then this is the Hollywood Bowl. So I started to work that into the background. And then the last things I did bugs, and then I did the, um, the piece in the front with all like with his stand and then the instruments. So this is done in oil. And this is kind of where I went over and I let it dry and then I layered a little bit. All right. Okay. <laughs> T, that's all right. Pencils work. Okay. So. Um, you can get a juice box. So what I wanted to say too was I experiment with oil. So this is like a Grand Canyon, right? And I'm just kind of working colors and seeing how that works. So you can kind of see a little bit, this is a small canvas. It's like a six by eight. And I'll do this to kind of get some color ideas down, which I actually use on my canvas. Mac, help him with the juice box. All right, let's get into it. So cheap glass paint palette hack. Yes, I have a glass paint palette. It works awesome. I use it with acrylics, not oils, because that way it's a little easier to scrape and clean off. And I'm all about, I'd rather reuse a palette. I mean, they're like seven bucks, which isn't that bad but my glass one was like 12 bucks and I've used it on, I can't even tell you how many paintings. So this is what I'm gonna start with. Um, what I want you to do, if you've got oils and you're working with it, I want you to do a simple sketch, right? And that simple sketch is a horizon line, right? Um, maybe you've got kind of an idea of some clouds, but we're gonna paint those in. So I'm not even worried about that because you're gonna see that I've got cloud lines on mine. Like I've got some, if you can see this down here, I've got some where I have clouds in, it just kind of marks the sketch. I'm gonna paint over that with uh, the, my sky color and then I'm gonna use white to start bringing my clouds out. So I just want you to do a simple, on your canvas, do a simple horizon line, maybe put in like a mountain or two if you want and something in the foreground, like one thing. And I just want you to start with that. So take like, a, take a, like two minutes, here well i get these munchkins juice boxes because we multitask here and uh then we're going to start in i love oil paints i've worked in oil paints since i was 15 14 14 i started working with oil paints and uh loved it absolutely loved it so it, to me like every medium has a different appeal to it watercolor is very just chemical and, and reactive to each other. And I love how that works. Um, acrylics work great if I'm doing like a pop art style on things and it dries fast, which works great in some instances. Oil allows me to work on it longer. And there's just something in the color that I like using that's a little punchier sometimes. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my palette here. I'm gonna see what's still wet. See, I mean, I just dipped my finger in my red. I used that a week ago and it's still wet. Uh, some will get a skin on it, like my black has a skin on it, and all I'll do is push that out. There you go, right? So, and then I can reuse that so I don't have to just, I don't have to waste any paint. And then I'll do the same thing with like my browns, brown is still um, a little wet. So you can see that even, and I haven't even covered this, I've left it out in the open, 
and my paints are still pretty pliable. Now, when you're doing, when I'm doing a sky, and you don't have to do the same kind of sky that I do, but as you all know by now, my favorite color is teal, right? So I'm gonna pop some stuff down there. It's probably actually more than I need. And then I'm gonna get my titanium white. So I'm gonna, use, if, if you have, you can just use a blue and a little bit of a yellow if you want to mix. I'm gonna, uh, or you can go straight up blue. I'm gonna put down titanium white. And we're gonna start in. So I've got my two colors. Now in my, Scott, is that, is this, hold on, let me see if this is, yeah, it is. All right, that's fully in view. So it's not a huge surface. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a brush. It's a number ten, right? It's a number ten flat tip brush. It's a little slightly rounded, but it, that's it. Okay. And all all I'm gonna do is pull my paint. I feel like Bob Ross. Happy little trees. So this is gonna seem. I'm gonna go kind of along my line a little bit here, and I'm actually gonna go over my line just a hair because. I don't want a white gap. Like I don't want to see any canvas when I go to paint the rock structure in my sky. So again, I'm painting background to foreground. All right, if you have questions, please pop them in the chat. Scott, I am not really paying too much attention to it, so you'll have to help me out. Um, but I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get a good layer of paint down here. And it's not going to take long, couple minutes. I'm going to I'm going to go up and around my mountain, my mountainous structure. And because like the what I have in my background is it's a little far off, but it's not super far. Um you notice like when you do really be a good observer of nature and how uh, as the further back you go, and I know we've covered this in, in classes earlier, but the further the further back you go as you look out, the background starts to take on more, like it gets a little bit um, more washed out. You know, it'll start to kind of take the color of the sky a little bit. So it's not like big punchy colors because all the detail, and it's not detailed either. It's very light on detail. So I'm going to do this and just get a little bit more down. And then I'm going to start in on my clouds. Now, when I'm doing oils, and this is something that I had to really concentrate on is before when I would start, like I would have all my clouds sketched out and I would paint around that with the sky. Well, the problem with that is um, what I want to do is I want to pull the clouds out of the sky, right? So I don't want to just make it seem like it's sitting on top. And so what I would do is I would then, even though I drew out where my clouds were gonna be, I would just go ahead and paint the whole thing. And build into it. And this, what I love about oils too is, so I'm gonna have the, my first pass of clouds as I start to build in my color. I'm gonna show you here in a moment. And if I let it dry, I can come back over maybe with a little bit more white and I can build in some highlights you know, if I feel that maybe my clouds aren't punchy enough, but because my main focus are the Roadrunner who's over here and then Wiley Cuddy who's over here, I don't want my, I don't want the, my very background, like the very back of my background to conflict with the action that's going on, right? All right, so there we go. Bing, bang, bong, done. Looks just like a blue thing, right? Looks just like a blue thing. I'm gonna clean my brush out. And then we're gonna start in on the clouds. So digital oils, I found um, if you're working in Procreate or there's a couple other apps too, um, digital oils are interesting. They kind of take on the effect. All right, so I'm gonna grab my white. And here's where I'm going to start. So I've got all this down, right? Oh, what am I going to do? Um, and it's going to it's going to become like a lighter color of this. So it's going to pull that teal from behind. And I'm cool with that because right now, all I want to do 
is I want to get my shapes down on my clouds. And it's a little bit different because I'm used to painting on an easel. And maybe I should have just set one up today, but I've got a, I've got a semi distinctive way I do my clouds when I'm doing a cartoon style. And they almost kind of look like commas. So you can see it's, I can keep building up my color and you're gonna start to see the clouds like come to life. Notice too, I'm kind of going over a little bit on the lines that I had made. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Part of what I had to get over when I was oil painting was perfection on the first run. Uh, it, it, I don't know about you, but that doesn't happen for me. So there, I'm, when I'm doing it, it's not like, ah, uh, first pass and I'm done. I'm usually building in more um, to it and allowing myself to even find some moments in my painting where I'm like, oh, I actually kind of like that a little bit better. All right, so you can kind of see already, let's see if I change my light a little bit. What if I do this? Uh, no. All right, you can kind of see already, we'll dip down a little bit more where my clouds are starting to take effect. Now, these are just basic shapes, right? I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna make my little kind of comma style clouds. And I want it when, when I'm doing these, I like to take, so this is an actual location in uh, the Grand Canyon with this rock bridge that you go under. It's super cool. I like to take real life locations and then stick these characters in them where it makes sense. So there's all kinds of places in the desert um, that you can use for Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner. And I like using the Grand Canyon. I like using Monument Valley. It's really awesome. Um, you know, you got all those deserty style locations. So you can see that already in not too short of a time, I'm building in shapes. It's starting to look like kind of little puffy clouds. And what's great about this also, and why I start with a with painting the entire background. So if I wanted to, in some of my skies, if there's a tall sky, I might have different colors woven through. I'll do all that blending first, and then I'll come back and pull my clouds in over the top. But what I enjoy about this is because I've already got a base layer of paint down. Um, if I just leave some of these and I only do one pass on it, it's gonna look like it's kind of far off in the distance. And I like that effect. And then as I pull my clouds a little more forward, they get a little brighter. So it already gives some dimension to it. So you can kind of see like that's super light. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna brighten this up just a little bit more. And again, in using oils, I can work this paint for the next day or so, and it'll stay wet. So even if I come back in tomorrow and I'm like, oh, you know what? I want to add a little bit more white, or maybe I want to change up a little color or something. I can still keep doing that. Um, and add to my painting while the paint's still wet. It's what I like about that over acrylics acrylics once it's dry it's dry all right so pulling this in and it's all right also if again don't worry and i, and I i'm kind of i'm not stealing from bob ross but he's right when he said like there it's not a you know have the happy little accidents there's some stuff that'll happen and you're like oh crap but and I did this with a painting where I was doing a rock waterfall in the background and I took too much teal on my brush and I swiped it down on like a, a burnt sienna, you know, reddish brown. And I was like, oh, crap, I ended up really liking it because it took on more an effect of um, kind of algae on it. And as I looked at the, the picture that I was painting off of, I realized that there was probably a little bit more in that than I was seeing. Um, so I used it and I actually enhanced other areas like that and it turned out pretty nice. So again, 
you just kind of keep building into your colors. And for me, this scene is straight up daytime. So I'm not, I don't have any evening colors in the sky. All of my warm colors are going to be in the rocks. Um, I can get away with one brush again. I've got longer bristles on this. So it's a softer, it's a softer brush. Like so. And I, I like to, I, one of my buddies is a, a perfectionist and you can never tell that he has a brush stroke in it. And his painting is amazing. Like his paintings are just insanely awesome. I'm going to add another cloud back here. I'm going to let it be a little bit darker. So it's just going to, we're just going to lighten up a little bit. And I'm not even going to touch the bottom clouds with this. So I'm going to let it look like it just kind of fades into it. Um, but he is a perfectionist and he, you cannot tell that he has brush strokes. And it's quite amazing to see that. So it's, it really depends on the style. That's all. Okay, so I've got some pieces in, right? You can see that I've got some clouds that are a little further back. I've got some clouds that are a little forward. Um, I'm going to put this under here too for underneath. And blend that in. All right, not bad. Now I need to get a little bit more white on here. So my light source, and here's another thing that when you're painting, like where's your light source coming from? My light, this is gonna be almost kind of like high noon. So my light source is coming almost straight up and down. Um, I won't always wash my brush out either. Sometimes I'll just take a paper towel and you can see I've used this paper towel plenty of times. Um, I'll just take my paper towel and clean off my brush. Those are a little bit on there left, but I don't have to wash it every time in the turpentine. All right, so now in my palette that I've got, um, I've got all this teal right here that's mixed in with a white. I'm gonna go pull from the other side that doesn't have any of that mixed in. And we're gonna, so I'm going pure white instead of pulling some color in and we're just gonna add to it. And I'm not pressing hard either with my brush. I'm not pressing hard. So this is just soft strokes. And all I'm doing is kind of building up some color, right? building up my highlights. Like so. And I think that this cloud is gonna sit in front of this one. So I'm just gonna bring that swoosh down and I'll find too that sometimes I'll just like drop color on it like I'll drop white on this and then I'll come back and smooth it out again it's what I love about working with oils is the ability to just blend for days all right so it's already taking effect you can see the cloud shape there I'm going to work this in here and have, you know, something coming down here. So I've got a cloud that just off in the distance or in front of this one. And there we go. I like a little bit of a rougher brush stroke. I think it adds to the appeal. Again, it's all based on style right and the more you practice uh the more you start to develop that style that you have um i think i'm gonna put this cloud in front and again i'm not pressing super hard to start i'm just getting enough white down because if i pressed really hard it would start to blend in with the yeah, i'd pull in more teal and then it would get real muted real fast and i want to preserve a little bit more of the white and the highlights I see that I have already painted a bug that crawled across my painting. Awesome. Whoever gets this, whoever ends up buying this, is going to end up with a bug embedded in the painting. There you go. And it'll be like Jurassic Park, where 30 years from now, John Hammond will 
take his little scientists and they will uncover bugs in oil paintings and they will make dinosaurs from those bugs. And my painting will make a dinosaur. All right, there we go. And again, um, the best, the best advice I can give to kind of developing a style is to just start painting. Don't worry if it's not coming out right away. Like I, I my style has developed over the last 30 years. Well, I guess that's too long, 26 years. All right, so you can see clouds are starting to pull out, right? I've got some that are just dropped in the background a little bit. I might add to that some. Um, I haven't used a darker color yet uh, because I'm just using white and teal. So due to the fact that my background, I want in, in my sky here to be something interesting, I also don't want it to overtake. So there's not a ton of detail in that. You're right. I did. I did just want to who I wanted a desert scene with bugs because T, I think it makes perfect sense for bugs to be in the desert. Don't you? I mean, clearly you do because you just made that comment. So I'm in agreement with you, T. All right. Now, I might go back and I might work a little bit more of this later because I'm going to want some of this to dry. Um, but I'm going to start in on this part here. Now, what I have in my in my very background with the with the mountains is I'm going to start with a brown, but because but it's not going to be straight up brown, right? Or, or a golden red or, or an orange. There's going to be more of a bluish teal in that because it's set so far back. So this might freak some people out. I'm going to take some teal. Oh, look at that. Oh, shoot. Oh, it's terrible. I've just ruined my painting. Ruined. Now notice I'm not like slapping the stuff on like I was doing in the sky where I wanted more coverage. Um, I'm going to let the, it's a drier brush and I'm going to let that just kind of, I'm going to get all the paint out, right? And the reason why I'm not concerned with having it super like thick, like I did with the sky is because I'm going to go back in and I'm going to start to add colors on top and it's going to be a little easier to work in what I want without it being so heavy. Here we go here. I'm going to go around Roadrunner's plume. So I would highly encourage you guys, if you're really interested in, in it, think of yourself as a creative first, not as an illustrator, not as a painter, not a as a designer, but think of yourself as an, as a creative first, right? And it, and these are just different ways to get your creativity out. I like looking at oil paintings um, like we've got out here at the Art Institute in Chicago of John Singer Sargent. And there's one painting in particular, and it's the circus one that he did. And it doesn't look like a lot of his other paintings. It's very rough. And it's just, I stared at it for 20 minutes. It was, it's, it's amazing. I will find it. And then I will next, next week, I will show you, I'll have a picture, Scott, I'll give Scott a picture to show you guys. Um, because it's pretty awesome. And, and it's it's a lot of a roughness to it. All right, so you can see I've got some, just a base. I just use a dry brush to get all that down. Now, I'm gonna get into my browns and that's dry. That's not, ooh, look at that, not dry. All right, I pop that one. I think I've got a little purple. Let's see what goes on there. Nope, that's dry, that's dry. I got some yellow ochre. There we go. All right. So I got some yellow ochre and some raw sienna. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to start to go over this and define out my mountains a little bit more. Like so. Now, typically on this, I would already have my, like I would be done with my clouds in my sky, but I can go back and, and work that a little bit more. Um, it's okay if it overlaps or even if I paint over when it's a little wet still. It's the idea of like, it does not have to be perfect on the first shot. Like you've got time to work this. All right, so I'm gonna paint in and I'm just gonna get this initial set down, all right? 
Now, because this set of mountains in the back is set further, and I'm gonna show subtle highlights, but I'm gonna get some dry brush in here. And then once I have, let's pull a little bit more of this color. So once I've got this down, right, again, I'm just, it's kind of a murky looking brown, isn't it? And that's okay, that's good. Cause I've cooled it off a little bit. I need, I need it to blend a little bit more with the sky. That's what I need it to do. And it's gonna do that as we start to build in some build in some very minor detail and a little bit of highlight. So there we go. All right, I'm just gonna start on this side, okay? So I've got a base down. It looks just like a slop. It looks like it's, it's sloppy and that's okay. It's supposed to be that way. Um, also, word to the wise, don't, I repeat, don't mix your oil paints with your acrylic paints. It doesn't work. I'm just telling you right now because I've done it many, many times. I have a whole bin full of acrylic paints and it's all golden, pretty much brand for, and then I have some Blick. I then have a bin, which is what this is, a three stack bin for oils. It's got Blick and Grumbacher. What are the two commonalities? Blick. What did I do? I took a Blick acrylic, put it with my oils, tried to mix that to make a color and couldn't understand why things were crapping out on me on canvas. Well, I'm mixing acrylics with oils. So just make sure you have your colors. Um, your, uh, I'm sorry, the kinds of paint that you have separated. I'm gonna do a, ooh, oh, I'm gonna got oil paint all over my brand new shirt. Uh, Naples yellow light. Wow, T didn't even say anything about like product placement. T, I thought you would notice. It's my t-shirt, man. It's got it in. All right, and, and now I've got oil paint on it. Oh, it's... Great. See, it's a, it's a memento of class today. All right. Now I've got some Naples yellow light. Dang self-promotion. Sometimes you got to do it. All right. So I'm going to take this and I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a highlight. I'm going to just, so there's kind of like a ridge, a ridge on this mountain, right? And it's okay if it's super bright to start, cause I'm going to tone that down, but I'm, I'm showing just some layers, like it, without a lot of detail. Like I don't want a lot of detail on this. All right, there we go. It's all right, T, I forgive you. All right, so we're kind of pulling this in, right? And then it slopes down a little bit. There we go. I'm just, I'm just getting some highlights in. So this just kind of shows me that there, there's some scale to this mountain behind and there we go but without showing a lot of detail because again compositionally i don't want my the very back of my background to compete with the action that's going on in the foreground so it sh shouldn't compete it should just complement so you can already start to see here I'm, I'm i'm pulling in some layers now i might switch to a thinner brush as I try to, I'm not even gonna try. I'm gonna pull in some teal off this and, and just start to fade that in some. Now, what's nice about this is this cools it off, right? Cause this was getting a little warm. It cools it off and allows it to blend a little bit more with the background. I want you to be able to see that there's something back there but I don't want it to be um, I don't want something to like punch forward a lot. I just want it to sit in the back. So I just took teal over brown and my my Naples yellow light. And, and if you don't have like an, a specific color that I'm calling out, do like a white and a yellow and then just mix more of the white than the yellow. And that's what essentially Naples yellow light is. All right, and then I'm gonna pull that in here. Now, what I might show in my painting as I start to put more of this color in is um, some additional ridges. But just just broad strokes, nothing, nothing super detailed, nothing super refined. And notice too, I'm painting over my sign a little bit here where I've mapped that out because um, I don't wanna show 
any white canvas underneath. I want that to be covered over so that when I do paint over this and paint the sign, it's a nice clean line. All right, so I'll do a little bit more. There we go. And I'll pull that down. So it's kind of cooling it off a little bit and it and it's and it's pushing it's pushing these mountains back further. And that's what I want because when I do these right in here, this is gonna be vibrant orange style rock and stuff. And that's really gonna punch forward. It'll also be more detailed. So this is just like a supporting, it's like a background character um, in a movie, right? Don't feel bad for them. They're still making money. So you'll also notice too that on some colors, if you go over it, if you press too hard, you'll scrape the paint. You don't wanna do that. Um, so just, I, I like to use like, my bristles are a little longer. It's a little softer. Right there. All right, and I know it's, it's gonna be a little hard to see a lot of the like minute detail in this. Um, Scott, can you, how well can you see that? There, there's a little glare from the light. Okay. Um, oh, I see that. I'm going to switch to speaker view and I'm just going to do this. Um, let me see if I can. Ha ha. Better. You know what? I'm going to get it from my skylight. Hold on. We'll, we'll rock this for now. Cause I'm going to get, I'm going to get a shadow from my, for, or a glare from my skylight. So I've got some highlights in. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm just going to, I'm going to get my color down. And it's a little sloppy. Now I'm, I'm doing a nice hard line on where my clouds are. Right. And if I decide later that I want to add more, which I am going to do later, I'm going to add a little bit more highlights to my clouds. It's okay if it runs over the mountain a little bit because I can come back and do the same thing. So. Uh, yes, I do remember when we were trying to get the rock on our show. It didn't work. That's okay. We tried for like four months. I thought Arnold Schwarzenegger would be an easier pull. Although, to be quite honest, I have not tried getting Arnold Schwarzenegger on our show or on our class. He might do it. You never know. I just want to hear him say, get to the chopper. Or who said you could eat my cookies? We could go on for days. I digress. Anyway. Um, all right. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. And what I'll do too is I'll oftentimes, I'll kind of take a step back. I'll look at it in a different light and see if I'm, I'm going to turn these back on. There we go. Sorry if this is coming out a little fuzzy or a little, there's a sheen on it. Um, and I'll turn that one off there. If you're watching on YouTube, um, Hopefully this doesn't give you a seizure with lights going on and off. All right, there we go. So again, I'm, I'm, it's a, it's kind of like a muddy brown a little bit, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to, I'm going to go over Roadrunner just a bit. It's okay. Because again, when I go to paint Roadrunner, I don't want any white space can of canvas left or just even like very slight. I want it to be, to be a fully painted surface. You got a nice compliment in the chat. Oh, what was that? From Liliana and Heather Rose. You're a very, you're, a, you're an impressive oil painter. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate that. I have a lot of fun with it. It's a lot of fun. Oil paints are a blast. All right, let's get some more in here. Uh, programming note, if you're in California, we are going to have our Chuck Jones season of creativity at the Great Park in Irvine for three months starting in July. 
And then if you are out in California, I will be there in September for two weeks. Hanging out, creating stuff and all that all that goodies. All right, so there we go. I'm, I'm kind of going around. Now, one of my buddies will paint the complete background over the character, and then he'll paint the character over the background. That freaks me out. It freaks me out because I'm not as good as he is at um, kind of, I get, I get, I'm like, man, I, if I painted my background really well, what if I screw up on the character in the foreground? But Rob, check out Rob Kaz, if you, if you ever get a chance, K-A-Z. He's on Instagram. You can check him out. Rob Kaz Art, I think, is his website on on uh, on the web. Super cool guy. Extremely awesome guy. Very talented artist. He does Disney, Star Wars. He does Chuck Jones. Um, and then he has his own line of stuff. All right, so I've got that down right. It looks just like a blob again over here. I'm okay with that. Let's see. Can I? No, that was terrible. All right, whatever. I'm sure when I do my hat now, I'm going to take my Naples yellow light and not the one that I spilled on my shirt. I'm going to go for my. All right, and then I'm just putting in a highlight. That's it. Super, super light. I don't have to get real detailed in it. I'm going to pull this color down. I'm going to pull this color down, right? And, and maybe on this one, I, you know, the the side of the mountain actually kind of is at, it's at an angle. So my light starts real hot up here and then just fades down. Right. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to pull that light down. Right. And then I'm going to go back, take a little bit more Naples yellow light and do the same thing. So, you know, I've got a Ridge, right? So there's my Ridge. You can already start to see, how that do, there's a differentiation there and I apologize if it's too shiny and it's a little hard to see. So again, I'm going to pull my color down a little bit and it, it'll blend. And then as it blends, it'll kind of create its own, you know, reaction, which I like, and then I'll find some interesting things in that and I might be like, Oh, well, maybe there's a highlight on a ridge here like that, right? Super subtle, nothing like intense. And then I will blend that in. So, there we go. All right, so you can see a little bit. I know that that's a little hard. I'm gonna, I wonder Scott, if I did this. There we go. All right. More detail there. Yeah. So I'm gonna. You can just kind of see. I'm I'm pulling it down now. I'm using the same width brush when I be, because it's so far away and, and these mountains are off in the distance. And I think I want I want this ridge to come down this way too, right? So I'm gonna get that in. It's gonna I'm, we're gonna soften this up some. Here we go. There we go. All right. So because I've got this going, you can already see with just some simple brush strokes, you know, that's why I say like the kind of happy little act going Bob Ross with happy little accidents. You're already creating some interesting shapes back here with how the mountain goes in your background. And I think I'm going to do the same where I'm going to have it come up by his beak. All right. And then I'm going to get a little bit more Naples yellow light. And I'm only really working four colors raw sienna which is a reddish brown um my my light turquoise naples yellow light and a yellow ochre and yellow ochre is kind of like a must mustardy yellow all right there we go there we go okay so you can already kind of see how it's all starting to come together, right? And again, I'm keeping it super general because what you're going to see in the detour sign, even what you're going to see like this, this part of the ground here, it's going to start off um, a little uh, general, right? Where there's nothing really distinct about it other than some, maybe some color variation. And then it's going to get far more detailed as I come up to the sign. Same thing on this side, right? I've got a road over here and it's going to be, I've got this mountain set right here. 
So I'm going to grab a little bit more of Maple's yellow lights. I'm going to come back over here on this one. And I'm just, just going to put it in. And by the way, don't you don't have to connect every line. So I might have, you know, something like this, and then I'll have a bit of a gap. It's okay. And then I, I have to have this thing done in like two weeks. So by the time we're done with Mix It Up May, um, this should be finished or at least really darn close to finish. And I can show you what the final product looks like. So you were with it, you were, you were with it here at the beginning and you will get to see what it looks like at the end. All right, there we go. I'll kind of pull that down again. I'm just keeping it general. There's nothing super detailed about this. I don't want it to be super detailed because I don't want it competing with my foreground. There we go. All right, and that's about it. So I've got you know more teal here in the mountain. I might, I'll probably bring a little bit more teal now that I kind of take a look at this. I'll, um, this might be a little bit brighter than I want it to be. So I might come back with a smaller brush. So I'm gonna clean this out. And I'm going to come in with a thinner brush. I'll show you what I do with that. So um, those are my wide strokes. Now, uh, what do I want to use? What do I want to use? We're going to use. All right, I'm going to use a round. So this is a round brush as number seven. All right, and then my number seven brush, it can widen out. Let's see if I, oh, it's terrible. So it'll widen out, you know, if I press real hard, but if I wanna keep things kind of gentle, this works. So I'm gonna get my teal, a little bit of my yellow ochre and burnt sienna. I'm gonna tip this bad boy up because I think this works a little bit better. And I'm gonna go in and just start to add I want to darken this up a little bit because I want it to blend in more with the sky. Just like it would if it was, if you were out in nature, notice that the further away you get, the more it blends in, you know, with your, with the sky. So, and then even, even in the, I might find subtle shadows. So I don't have to keep it uniform, but notice even just doing this where I'm, pulling that down. I've made an interesting little shape here in this mountain, right? So it, again, it doesn't have to all be uniform. This is not a symmetrical design. And you can see kind of how this is all building out. So let me see if I can, let me see if I can do, Scott, go forward, Cam. Let's see if we can Let's get this out of the way for a moment. All right. So you can see there a bit, um, there's some detail. I've got some clouds going in. I'm gonna build on those, um, which is why I'm gonna stop on the mountains for now because I'm gonna build more into my clouds, meaning like some highlights. Um, I'm not gonna worry about low lights because I'm using the natural color of the sky behind it to to deepen, you know, my tone. So that creates the natural shadow on the clouds. And these aren't like big thunderstorm clouds anyway. So it's not like they're super dark on the bottom, but I'm going to build up that white a little bit. I'm going to continue to blend my whites and my clouds with that teal and like make semi defined shapes and then let it dry a little bit. Then I'll come back with a little bit more white and I'll, and I'll add just kind of some, some more subtle highlights. And then I'm going to get back into my mountains in that back set of mountains and start to add fine tune that a little bit to where I want to I want to cool it off a little bit more and kind of set it a little bit more in the background where it blends and then that way everything else comes forward in the foreground. Questions on oil painting. Fire away. I use easels almost all the time. I don't usually paint on a table. I would recommend if you have a chance like a little tabletop easel or something like that because if it's up in front of you like this, 
these guys are right here, if it's up in front of you, uh, you tend like perspective wise too, it, it looks different. So I guarantee you when I put this up on the easel, I'll look at the clouds and I'm, I know I'm gonna have to fix something because it's a little bit different when it's laying on a table. So I would recommend just having it propped up to where you're looking at it, at least at a majority, it doesn't have to be straight up and down, but a little bit more of an angle on that to where it's upright. Um, brush wise, some of my, I have some expensive brushes that are like 40 bucks, right? And why by a couple, I mean, I have like two that are $40. I clean them out very well because that's expensive. Some of my favorite brushes, I got at Blick for like, $13 for a set of 10. They work phenomenal. It's just really about the softness of the bristles, right? And, and how it works with the paint. So you don't have to have super expensive supplies to do this. I paint stuff that sells for decent money and I painted them with $12 brushes. Um, and, and when I say 12, I mean, they're like 10 came in a pack. So it was like a dollar 20 brush. Um, questions on oil painting fire away if there are no questions thoughts on oil painting favorite oil painters i love monet i got to see the exhibit downtown absolutely stunningly amazing i love monet oh i love monet monet's what he was heavily influenced me as a artist in high school can i see those of you who are into oils today can i see where you're at with them i think laura is in and Nathaniel said he had oils. So if you had oils and you were starting with this background, can I see where you're at with it? Laura is not paying any attention to me whatsoever. <laughs> How about Nathaniel? Nathaniel, can I see what you got? Someone is vacuuming in the unit next to me. And that's all I can hear. All right, what about Laura? No. If I say her name like five times, watch Laura. Laura. Oh, there you are. Can I see your painting so far? I only have like the background done, which I'm doing in acrylics currently, but I'm moving on to um, oil paints at the moment. Sweet. That's great, dude. So I, I, I do the same thing. I'll paint, I'll paint my big blocks in, in acrylic if I want to get a base down or I'll spray paint it and then I'll go over the top mm -hmm. with oils. Very cool. So what, what is your scene going to be? Uh, it's just kind of this person in the center. It's almost half and half. I might share it in this class another time if I finish it, but yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. Good job, dude. Way to start. Um, Nathaniel. Nathaniel, I want to see yours, buddy. What do you want? All right. Yes. All right. Hold it up there. Hold it up there. I'm going to go back to speaker view. All right. So you're, the way you use your markers and stuff seems to me like oils would work very well with how you do things. Clearly, it does because you're able to blend. I love what you did in the ears. Right. And, and, and working that over and you're going to be able to continue to work that for a couple of days to kind of get those strokes down. I love the start of that, man. It's That's actually already done. It's just, it looks messy. No, no. Dude, look at mine. Mine looks like a hot mess right now. And that's okay. Cause it's just the start. Like you got to get color down in order to start working it. Um, I think it's a phenomenal start, dude. Keep going on that. Cause I would love to see how you finish it. I think you're, like I said, the way you do your color with your markers and stuff, oil seems to be like uh, something pretty that it would match that style. All right. So anybody else? T. Hi, T. So it's a sketch and it's also a pun. Um, I'll wait to see if anybody can get it. Uh, uh, is it a Loki? Yes, it is Loki. In a tutu? <laughs> Uh, no. I mean, kind of, but also no. Okay. You're going to have to help me out. Loki, Loki Literature Club. <laughs> <laughs> I have no regrets. <laughs> Nor should you. Good job, T. All right. Anybody else? We'll give it up for one shot. Laura. Hi. I'm Hi. sharing the floor today. I'm Kat. 
I'm sorry, Kat, yes. Um, this is my sketch. I was, I, I decided to sketch on this and then I'm transferring it to my Okay, thing. Move, it, move it a little bit over. There you, go. there you go. Kind of hard right. to put it in the camera if you don't look. That's awesome. So you're going to transfer that to Canvas after this? Yes. I cool. was. Probably messed it up by picking it up. And then I have to try again. Oh, well. It, it'll work. It'll work. Nice job, man. Cool. All right, dudes. Well, that's the intro to oil painting, right? Some A little bit of technique, some supply stuff, and just practice, 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 practice. I've been painting since I was 14 in oils, and I'm 41, about to turn 42. So... That's a long friggin' time. Anyway, I hope you guys have had a great week with everybody else. Um, I think next week I'm doing colored pencil. <laughs> yes. And it's going to be delicious because you're going to get to see some stuff nobody else has seen that I'm just going to start working on. So I'm lo looking forward to that. I think I'm colored pencil next week. I'm not sure. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. Have a great weekend. And I will see you next time. Later, Thanks, dude. Ben. Yeah, man. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.